Summary of Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield This is the story of the Battle of Thermopylae and the last fight the Spartans made against the Persians. The Persian king Xerxes asked the scholar Gobarts to write it down for him. Gobarts writes down the story as told by Zion Sazio, a Greek who was hurt on the battlefield and was found by the Persians. One evening, King Xerxes sees the Greek prisoner in person. He says that he can only tell the story of an ordinary soldier, and Xerxes says that this is exactly the kind of story he wants to hear. Zio starts by telling how, when he was about to die, the god Apollo saved him and told him to tell the story of Thermopylae. Zio says he was born in the city of Astakos, but he and his cousin Diamake had to leave because their city was attacked right before they turned 10. When Zio and Diamake were on their way to the Estacos market early one morning, they were attacked. They soon find out that their parents are dead and that the city is gone. They find Bruxius, who works for Zio's family. Diamake is raped by Argive troops when she goes back to the family farm to bury Zio's parents. The three of them run away to the woods, where they spend months trying to stay alive. Zio hears stories about the Spartans and decides that he will one day live with them so he can learn how to kill Argives out of revenge. One day, a group of farmers catch Zio stealing from them, and they nail him to a board. At this point, something makes Zio want to take a different path. Two years after he was left without a family, Zio did live with the Spartans and saw a young boy named Tripod get beaten to death. Zio works for Tripod's friend Alexandros right now. Dionyx, who is Alexandros's guide, soothes him after his friend Tripod dies by talking about how brave Tripod was in the face of pain. Then, Zio goes back to the story of his own pain, when he screamed helplessly and didn't have any courage. Bruxius tries to make him feel better by telling him that no one can be brave when they are alone and cityless. But Zio gives up and goes out into the snow to die. But Apollo shows up and tells him that he has a reason to live. Zio, his cousin, and Bruxius live in the woods for a few more seasons before they die. Bruxius sends the kids to Athens so that they can learn how to live in a polite way. Zio jumps ahead a few years to when he is working as Alexandros' training partner. He tells a story to show how harsh the Spartan training was. One night, during a tough drill, Polynikes breaks Alexandros' nose in anger because he broke a small rule. After this, Alexandros gets asthma, which seems to be caused by his fear. Dionyx tries to help him get over his fear by pushing Zio to fight Alexandros as hard as he can. If Alexandros can't become a fighter, his life will be a shame. After this, Alexandros and Zio go with the Spartans to a small fight against Antirion, which is another Greek city-state. They have to swim across a huge sea as part of their trip. Their survival brings them closer together as friends and makes Alexandros more brave. Both boys see the Spartans fight for the first time, and Leonidas's family leadership shines through as he tells the Spartans they will soon face a much bigger enemy, the Persians. When they get back to Sparta, Alexandros's mother, Paralia, asks Zio about her son's behavior and bravery on the trip. After that, Dionyx's wife, Arate, becomes friends with Zio and asks him to keep an eye on her nephew, Rooster, who is known for being a traitor. When Zio asks, she tells him that his image of Apollo as a child was real, and she starts to act like a mother to him. A few days later, all impures, Alexandros's father, gives Rooster the job of squire, and Zio starts training with suicide to become Dionyx's squire. In the years to come, Zio, Alex, and Rooster will all get married and have children. After the fight at Tempe didn't work out, the Spartans quickly made plans for a defense at Thermopylae. Their wives' disapproval pushed them to do this. 300 troops will be sent there to fight to the death, says the news. Dionyx can't go because only guys with kids are being picked. That night, Rooster, who has repeatedly shown himself to be a brave fighter and turned down offers to become a stepbrother Spartan, tries to find a safe place to hide, even though he knows he will probably be caught as a rebel. Sure enough, Rooster and his family were soon taken away by Cryptia killers. Arate and Alexandro step in to save his life before he can be killed. 
In the process, it turns out that Rooster's son is really Dianix's son. Dies means Dianix can still go to Thermopylae. Dianix takes his platoon on a hunt three days before the march to Thermopylae. He tells his young fighters the truth about his fear, and they think that women might have more Andrea, or courage, than men. Later, Dianix shows that this is what Leonidas was thinking when he chose the 300. He chose people whose wives, mothers, sisters, and daughters would stay strong after their loved ones died, which would encourage all of Greece to fight back and win in the end. The 300, along with their squires, helots, and friends, marched to Thermopylae, set up camp, and get ready for war. They turned down a message from the Persian side, which asked the Spartans to abandon their friends and become Persian slaves. The battle doesn't start until Xerxes has settled into a fancy chair on top of a mountain from which he can watch the fighting. Soon, a fight that has never been seen before will start. Even though the Persians have a huge edge in numbers, the Spartans use their discipline and the fact that they are in a safe place to hold them back. That night, while Zia was taking care of his hurt master, Dionyx, he told him what had finally happened between him and Diomake. He found Diomake at the Temple of Persephone in Athens a long time ago. He was sad to see that his cousin, who was meant to have married well, looked like she had been through a lot. She comforts Zio when he wants to take her away. She tells him that each of them is living out the path that the gods chose for them. The next morning, early in the day, Rooster is caught with news from the Persian camp. He tells Zio that the Persians will come up from behind and attack the Spartans. He also tells him how to sneak into the Persian camp and find Xerxes' tent. A Persian prince who left the army confirms this knowledge, but the Spartans think it's a trick because they've seen signs that look good for them. Leonidas won't leave Thermopylae, but he lets some of his best fighters, like Zio, Rooster, Dionyx, and Alexandros, go after Xerxes' tent. The raid goes wrong, and Alexandros dies, which makes Dionyx feel terrible. At the funeral, Polynikes says that Alexandros was the best of us all. The Persians have been seen coming up behind the Spartans, so Leonidas is getting his troops ready for a last fight. Rooster is set free, and Zeo, who is not a Spartan, is also allowed to leave. But he says no because Sparta is now his city. There are also a lot of friends, servants, and squires who stay. Leonidas talks to the men who are still alive and tells them that their job is to stand and die. This gives the rest of Greece the motivation to finish the win. If they run away to save themselves, Greece will also fall. Zeo thinks that Leonidas is a king who makes people free by what he does and how he acts, unlike Xerxes, who doesn't fight with his men and instead enslaves people. As the Spartans make their last fight, they are killed by the much larger number of Persians. Zeo is also seriously hurt. On the day that Zeo finishes his story, the Greek naval forces have just won a battle against the Persian navy. This makes it possible for the Greeks to win all future battles against the Persians. Zeo will soon die because his health is getting worse. The body of Zeo is taken to the refuge of Persephone to be kept safe. After some time has passed, Diomake bears the ashes of Zeo to Thermopylae and pays his respects there. About the author Stephen Pressfield was born in Trinidad, where his father was stationed with the Navy. He went to Duke University and got his degree in 1965. In 1966, he joined the Marine Corps. Before he became a full-time writer, he did a lot of different things, like teach, drive a truck, and work on an oil rig. The Legend of Bagger Vance, his first book, came out in 1995. In 2000, it was turned into a movie. The Story Tides of War is about the Peloponnesian War, and the non-fiction book The War of Art is about how to write. He has also written a number of other scripts that have been turned into Hollywood movies. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.